ahead and begin. We're going to open up in prayer. If you have a prayer request, just let me know. Say something. I write something. Text me something. Send a message. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start it. Uh, I pray that wherever you are listening to me, uh, and whenever you are listening to me, and, and wherever you listen to me from, I pray that you are experiencing uh, the presence of the Lord. And uh, hey, Mom, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. I pray that you're experiencing the presence of the Lord. And wherever his presence is, there you will find his what? His power. And wherever his power is, there you will find his what? You will find his, uh, you will find his provision. Wherever you find his provision, you will find his protection. And guess what? Wherever you find God's presence, power, provision, and protection, you will find his uh, plan for your life. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start. And, uh, and as people come on, uh, I'm not recording this live. So, you know, I understand people's privacy. And, and most of you are, are listening to me in your home. So, you know, I understand that. And so uh, I do have band going up. I don't have Facebook up because I don't re want to record this on Facebook Live. Uh, so let's go before the Lord in prayer, and we're going to go into uh, the seven realities of experiencing God. And right now, we're still on a God-centered life, and so let's pray. Um, share this if you can, if you want to. Uh, reach out, you know, as we work out some of the kinks. Uh, I pray that uh, that uh, that some more people will join us. I sent out 20 books, so we're probably expecting 20 individuals. Uh, there's some individuals uh, that are not as techno savvy, tell the truth. I am not as techno savvy. I'm learning all this. So let's go before the Lord in prayer because I don't want to hold us long. God, we thank you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We exalt your name. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving and we enter into your courts with praise. God, we give you all the praise and all the glory. God, you brought us throughout this day, wherever our life was, you had us in mind. And for that, we want to say thank you. God, you covered us with your blood and you can count your angels around us. Wherever we were, Lord, you took care of us. And for that, we want to say thank you. God, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving, your courts with praise. God, we recognize that the place, we sanctify this moment. We sanctify this time. God, we lay ourselves down upon your brazen altar to present our bodies as living sacrifices. God, we pray, oh God, that you will, oh God, inhabit this place, inhabit the live, inhabit band, uh, the Zoom. God, we pray that you will be glorified and we pray that your, your glory and your will for every one of our lives will be extended. We thank you. We ask that if we've committed any sins, God, if we've harbored anything in our hearts and our minds that wasn't pleasing in your eyesight, we ask that your blood will wash us and that your blood will cleanse us. God, we ask, oh God, that you will, God, bless everyone that's coming on and we ask that, God, lives be changed and hearts be renewed and, and that you get the glory out of this. In Jesus' name, we pray. We pray for all other churches that are involved in this study. God, we pray that we will be as one God, we are making a human attempt to be as one. And we know, God, when there's when all of us gather on one accord in one place, suddenly there comes a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it will fill our houses. Oh, God, and you will fill men, you will fill boys, you will fill girls, you will fill your neighborhoods with the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you. We pray that after this, a revival will take out in our lives in our homes, in our relationships, on our jobs, God, in our communities, in our churches, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God, stir up the gift that is within me. Override my natural abilities, Lord. Be glorified in all that we do. In Jesus' name, we pray. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. We pray, amen and amen. Amen. Hey, Lewis, how are you? I am doing well. 
Hey, Ariel, I see you. I see you, Ariel. Hello, hello, I see you. I see you, I feel you. All right, so we're on band, and we got some individuals joining us on Zoom. And hey, y'all folks on Zoom, I am not on, I'm not live tonight. Uh, did some of y'all, were y'all able to watch that uh, Q&A on last night? That was like bananas, wasn't it? <laughs> that was... That was like bananas. I'm gonna bring some other individuals. Uh, Xavier, he's very raw. He's very, hey mom. Hey, Eileen, I see you sis. Hey mom. All right, so look at dad. How dad gonna be eating y'all? <laughs> All right, so grab your books. Grab your books, The Seven Realities for Experiencing God. I think what we're gonna do is uh, on Sundays, I will introduce uh, that that week's uh, topic, and then on your own or in your group or in your homes or uh, with some of the individuals, y'all go over, you know, the the the, the lesson outline that's kind of listed in gray. You know, start it, read and respond, and have dialogue. Now, this is the first time in my ministry that I am giving y'all some personal one on one. So I know, I, I, I just know that it's going to be crazy. So don't, 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 when you start growing and God start moving and things start happening, you know, don't kind of for naught, but I, I pray that it'll be a blessing to y'all. And so uh, that's what I think we ought to do. Uh, I do see Miss Leola Marion. She is on. I don't know if she can hear me or not, uh, but uh I'm seeing, I'm seeing she on. Uh, so let's talk about a God-centered life. That's where we started on Sunday, uh, a God-centered life. And what we was discussing is when we talk about a God-centered life, it's like a balance beam. And in the midst of that balance beam, uh, that, that there's what we call the pendulum. And at that pendulum is where everything is balanced. And what we want is, and it's amazing, that we talk about a God-centered life after I finish the teaching and preaching series about what? Divine alignment. So that's like crazy. That's like crazy. So let's look at the lesson, y'all. Let's look at some things. Uh, those of you who are on Zoom, uh, unless you want to be viewed, you can. But, you know, let's, let's get some dialogue going. Those of you who are on band, I can read what you say, but I cannot hear you. There is a way I can do that, but... I don't want to set that up right now, but those of you who are on Zoom, let's have some dialogue. And what we talked about on Sunday was faith. We talked about faith, and we tried to come up with a, a, a basic, basic definition of faith without quoting the scripture, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. Yes, that what the script, that's what the scripture says faith is. But what we want to know is, how does that apply to who? My life. What is it about that verse? And how do I apply this? And the key to it, y'all, oh my goodness. The key to it is looking at that scripture and saying to God, okay, if my focus is on you and I want you to be the center of my life and I'm trying to hit the bulls out with you, what does this scripture say to my life? And I think many times, we miss, we miss the value of Bible study and Bible dialogue because we look at it in the book as a, we look at the Bible as a book that did talk, but we never look at the Bible we, uh, as a book that is talking. Y'all got that? So there's two views you can look at scripture. Something that was said versus something, oh, there you go. There's something, oh, uh, I can't. Something that what is talking to us. Y'all got me. So, so it says that we came up with a definition. Faith is an overarching belief that regardless of what I say, what I do, that God is present. And we utilize, we utilize uh, as a topic, as a, as a center that faith is, uh, and we say that faith uh, we walk by faith and not by sight, or we say that we survive by faith. There is no understanding the realities of God in my life 
if I don't first what believe that what he said in this book applies to who? Me. How many people go to churches? Well, we don't go to churches. Some well, still going to church or gathering. And when they look at and they hear a presentation of the word, they don't have it that you know what this scripture is speaking to mean. So in your own words, you know, we got to, uh, how would you explain that statement in your own words? And we came up with a definition. Faith is believing God without our five senses. Y'all got that? So I want to take you, I want to take you to another verse. Turn to Hebrews 11 and 6, and let's get some dialogue going. Y'all do know that when Jesus, when Mary and Joseph found Jesus in the temple, he was, he was answering and asking questions. So Hebrews 11 and 6 says what? Without faith, it is what? Impossible to please who? God, y'all with me? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, without some overarching belief that he exists without showing me anything, it is impossible to believe God. So, 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 when we look at that, what does it say to you in terms of understanding who God is and how to know the will of God for your life? What does it say to you? Y'all got me there in Swainsboro? Y'all got me there in Twin City? Give me a thumbs up. All right. Hebrews 11 and 6. According to verses 2 and 6, God's approval or commendation, God's pleasure and God's reward, how do faith and seeking nearness to God relate to these ideals? How do they relate? Without faith is it impossible to please him? Verse number 2 said, For by it the elders obtain a good report. So how does that relate? to seeking nearness to God and how does that how does those two ideas relate are we there huh yeah I can hear you Do I need to slow down in my scripture reading? <laughs> Do I need to slow down in finding my scriptures? <laughs> Y'all better go to that table of contents. <laughs> what now? All right, gotcha. So when we talk about faith, when we talk about faith, let me show y'all something in this, in this chapter. Hebrews 11 and 3. I want y'all to see something. Through faith. I want to show y'all something. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Through faith, the worlds were framed by the word so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. But it's interesting 
Now he says, by faith, Abel offered up unto God a more excellent sacrifice. So what's the difference in through faith and by faith? What's the difference? Uh-oh, uh-oh. What's the difference between through faith and by faith? Because we read this. Hey, Bridges, your husband there. Tell him, get in the camera. Tell him to get in the camera. Come on, get in that camera, fella. Default too quiet. What's the difference in through faith? We understand the words refrain. But then in verse number four, it says by faith. Two different things. So how do I explain that in my life? Uh huh. Through faith, we believe. By faith, we act on it. Through, okay, through faith, we believe. By faith, we act on it. It's just like this. If I have a recipe, and it says, if you add the eggs, you add the flour, you add the, you add the sugar, you add the vanilla, you add the cinnamon, you would get a cake. It is only when I actually mix those ingredients that I get the cake. So through faith is the action. By faith is the what? The commandment. Y'all got it. By, by putting eggs, flour, sugar, vanilla, cinnamon, all that stuff to make a cake, it is only through my actions that now I produce the cake. So that's it. So you hear a lot of individuals saying, I have faith, I have faith. That's the buy. But acting out that faith is the through. We miss that in Hebrews 11, because we he starts out faith, faith, faith. But if you see this, it is only through faith that God framed the world by what he spoke. But other individuals, by their faith, but their by faith had to go to action through faith. Y'all got that? Did I confuse somebody? Did I miss somebody? Did I lose somebody? All right. Hebrews 11, 23 and 29. Now, now I need y'all to do some answering. Hebrews 11, 23 through 29. We're going to get this. I, I, I know, I know in the, in the traditional African-American church, we ain't used to answering the preacher. It's said, amen. And go on, Rel. But y'all going to have to talk back to me now. Uh-oh. Hebrews 11 and 23, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was he in three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of God greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith, here we go, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, lest that he destroyed, 
lest the firstborn should touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. What common factor do these verses emphasize in the way Moses experienced God? When you look at and you hear those verses, what are the, some of the things that jump out at you? Many times faith is being repeated. What are some other things that jump out there at you? Some of the, the earlier verses, Moses was a child. So someone else had to get involved in helping him to become who he was destined to become. Can I tell y'all something? It's going to always involve God partners with us. That's the, next, that's the next chapter. He partners with us to fulfill his divine purpose. He partners with individuals. It even said by faith Moses when he was born was here three months. Moses didn't hide himself three months. Someone else did. Those of y'all in Swainsboro, what are some common themes you hear in these scriptures? Come on, Louis, Eileen, what y'all hear? Don't put the camera on mom, what y'all hear? Not one at a time. Yeah, Eileen, I see you, Louis. Turn the camera on you. What are some of the things y'all hear in these scriptures? Look at it, read it. It involves others. Wow. He not only believed in it, but he actually believed in it enough to do something. How many times, oh my goodness, how many times do we believe, but we don't believe enough to do something? Anywhere in here, do y'all see where God did anything? Uh-oh, anywhere in these verses, do y'all read anywhere where God did anything? Nope, it was all Moses. Then where was God in all this? Was God in Moses' faith? That's Moses' faith in God, and they put him to do it. Right. Moses' faith in God. This is it. God had already, God had already did what he was supposed to do. Now, Moses had to do something with what God gave him. Y'all, I'm telling you this. A lot of people miss out on the experiences of God because they wait on God to do it. He's already given us enough to do it. We just need to trust in him. Because remember Hebrews 11 and 6, without faith it is impossible to please him. So what happened was, he, Moses moved on his faith, he pleased God, and God reciprocated. He returned, or he gave Moses a reward. It was you going down and believing God for the, for the, for the car or for the house and God reciprocated your reward. He, re he rewarded you for your faith. Oh my goodness, God does not reward without faith. And this is up. What now? 
Faith is the way that works is what? And how many people walk around dead in their faith? You know why? Because they don't have the works. Can I tell you the greatest act of work of faith? It is getting in this word and saying, you know what? Let these words come off these pages and let it be real in my life. Most of us put the responsibility on God. But God says, without faith, you can't please me. So let's do this. Turn to page 14 of your book. How does your life demonstrate faith in God? Anybody want to share? Anybody want to share? How does my life demonstrate? What are some examples where you know for sure that without evidence, your life demonstrated faith in God? Talk to me when you say your actions. What do you, you what do you mean? If you're acting um, in accordance to his, to his word and his way. Uh-huh. And, and how you... Um... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, demonstra it's demonstrating how you act, like how you treat other people, um, how you handle his people. Right. And, and all the things that you do. Yeah, so, so your actions... And, and this is it. This is what happens. There's a belief, there's an attitude, there's a value that leads to a behavior. Every behavior we have, there's a belief, attitude, and value that led to that behavior. So when it comes down to faith, there's a belief. I hear you, I hear you Bridges. There's a belief. There's an attitude that faith created that action. So what you're saying is, regardless of how somebody is treating me, I believe God enough to not what? Treat them wrong. Y'all see that? Even in that instance right there, God is at work. But you know what we want? We want lightning and thunder. Where is God? Right there in that action. Eileen, give me an example of God's faith in your life being demonstrated. <laughs> what now? Yeah, that, that answer right there. Yeah, that one you were just finna say. Yeah, that one right there. That one, that's the one I'm waiting on. In your what? Talk to us. Talk to me. What you mean in your sickness? Okay. How is God, how's that faith in God being demonstrated like that? Regardless of what the situation is, you still what? You're still not allowing your sickness what? To determine your thoughts. That's faith in God. That regardless. But let me tell y'all something. Can, can I tell you something? We look at these individuals in Hebrews chapter 11 and we don't assert our name nowhere in it. Mom, how is your faith in God being demonstrated right now? My faith in God is being 
Yes, I'm telling you. Oh goodness, man! I'm, if I can get, if I can get two thousand people to understand, it's the small, intricate ways that God shows Himself in our lives. But you know what? We look at we look at men and women of God, and we say, "Oh, their faith is big." No, our faith ain't no bigger than no one else's. It's just appreciating the little small things God does in our lives. It's looking at God in the small details. The reason why Moses could do the things he did was because he began to see God in the small details. Just the very act alone to get up is an act of faith. But we don't see that. You know why? Because we take things like that for granted. And it's that same faith it takes to do the what? The big things. Now we quote this. Now watch this. A mustard seed. A mustard seed. Small grain of mustard seed. And you can move mountains. I'm finna correct. I'm finna correct some teaching now. It's not mustard seed faith. What he was describing is just like the mustard seed start with a small, that's a small seed and grows to a big bush. That parable is not the, about the size of faith. It is the tenacity in faith. That the mustard seed is the smallest seed of plant. But the mustard bush is a large bush. But we quote. All I need is a mustard seed. You know, if I have a grain, faith as a grain of a mustard seed. That's not talking about, that's not talking about, y'all, the strength of faith. It's talking about tenacity. Because the mustard seed is a small seed and it grows into a big bush. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Where we at with that? Where we at with that? What y'all wow. think? Wow. No, uh, I don't want no wow today. Uh, no. Tell me something. Give me something. I don't want no wow today. Give me something. I was just thinking, I am. I actually heard one seed produced. I'm going to say it. I'm going to 1,400 pounds or 11,000 pounds of mustard seed. One strong seed produced 10 months. Right. Oh, that's good. It, you got something to say, Bridges? I heard something. You sure? Your 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 husband? Come on, come on, preacher. <laughs> He'll chime in in a okay. All right. All right. Man, we just tell me. All right. So the mustard seed is not talking about the size of faith. It's talking about the tenacity. A mustard seed produces all that. You know why? Because it has replicating power. That's what you mentioned, Lewis. It replicates. The way our faith works is it should be, we ought to replicate it. Can't you online? Can you hear me say something? She says yes. Okay. All right. So, so, so here we go. Here we go. Here we go. One of the most common questions asked by people who are seeking to please God and live by faith is what? How do I know and do the will of God? When have you wanted to know God's will? What did you do? How do I know and do the will of God? And when have you wanted to know God's will? What did you do? Anybody want to give an example? Hey, Clark. Uh -huh. 
Anybody want to give an example? On the bottom of page 14, how do you know the will of God, know and do the will of God? When have you wanted to know God's will? What do you do? Can I tell y'all something? You know what I, I, I tell you my answer. When COVID-19 go in, God? When are we going to get through this pandemic? What is your will for this? Where is this going? And what am I doing? I'm waiting in it just the very act. To ask God that question requires faith. Because to ask him that question, I'm believing that he's going to provide an answer. What you got, Clark? What you got? You're saying something, huh? Hey, I don't think there's no one amongst us that haven't asked that question. But but then with me, go go ahead and just start praying when I want it. Yes. I sent a message. Go ahead, Angie. I hear you. Okay. I'm listening. She probably don't know you talking to her. Oh, you, you asking that question? Yes. Bottom of page 14. How do I know when the question that's being asked is how do I know and do the will of God? When have you wanted to know God's will and what did you do? Uh, you had a question? Yes. On the bottom of page 14, Angie. Yeah. 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 I can hear you. When have you wanted to know God's will and what did you do? Oh my goodness, go ahead and talk to us. So one of the things, one of the things that you did was you immediately, your act of faith was number one, prayer, prayer. And the thing that, that gave you consol, uh, that gave you consolation in that is that you needed peace. You needed the peace from God that this is, this is the right move, especially watch this, but everything else is going on. 
But how many times individuals move out and make a decision and all this going on without seeking what God first? Now, the reason why he started out with a God-centered life is it asks, it asks us to really examine our lives to see whether or not I'm really walking by what I say is faith or am I walking by something else? Because Moses moved without the facts. And as we look at the, as we look at the life of Moses, what we're going to really see is him moving and responding by faith and through faith without having facts. But if the truth be told, y'all. So, uh-huh. So, uh, uh, And what she did in responding to faith, she said, prayer. Through prayer. Through prayer. Through prayer, through moving to respond to faith. But how many people, and watch this, I'm going to pray about it, and I'm going to wait for God to answer. Don't do nothing. Mm -mm. That ain't faith. Faith is praying and then moving. Y'all got it. You see it. So in knowing the will of God, my God, listen, in order to know God's will and to do God's will, you have to have some experiences with him. All right. Now we finna get to the meat. Me. You have to have some experiences with him. And the truth is, we don't have enough experiences with faith. Y'all finna get me to preach it for sure now. We don't have enough experiences. We do not have enough experience. You know, it's just like this. You know why jobs ask for a resume? Because they want to know what? Let me see your work experience. You know why when I went down there and tried to get that that uh that Escalade with six doors black, and he said, let's pull the credit report. Let's see your what? History. <laughs> Everyone, ooh, y'all just messed me up. Every in every other system in this world requires a history. You know why they asked for that transcript to get in college? Let me see your history. And why do we feel like when it comes down to experiencing God, the, the best God has for us and knowing his will, that we can walk up there without any history? The reason why he gave us Hebrews 11 and all those verses so we can read history and create it ourselves, create a history of faith. But can I tell y'all something? What, what you need to do is go and write down your history. Now to write it to the Hebrews, writing down their history, but what experience in history you got with God that when it comes down to it, knowing his will, he can say, yep, you got history with me. Let me tell y'all something. Some of us don't have no history. Can I tell you something? There are people that listen to men and God every Sunday, every Wednesday, without any history. And then we ask, why is God moving in this person's life and versus that person? Look at the history. So a God-centered life, a God-centered life is a life that has history with God. Uh-oh, oh snap. It's a life that has history with God. So what I do is, when I read Hebrews 11, I then say, my name, by faith, Benjamin did this. 
by faith, Benji sold his home in Albany, moved to Moultrie, because God what? Said he wanted what? To plant a church? By faith. What history we have. And what we're going to see with Moses' life is that the reason why he could do it because he built a history. And as we go through this, what I want you to understand is I want you to, I want you to begin to, to feel it and to begin to hear it and begin to study your life. And what you're going to find is is that God has been at work. But because you didn't write down the history. What is God's will for my life? Isn't the best question to ask. What is God's will and how can I join him in that is the better question. Too often, we want to plan our lives and call God in to make us successful. Too often, we want to plan our lives. Then say, hey God, come on, make this happen. But when we are living God-centered lives, we understand that God has better plans that he invites us to join. Now somebody tell me, before I get off this live, what is the key in what we just saw or what I just read? All right, so what sticks out at you? Lewis, what sticks out at you when we re when we hear that? Mom, what sticks out at you? Eileen, what sticks out at you when we read that? What? <laughs> you know I'm going to throw a flag. <laughs> I'm going to throw a flag. Lakisa, what sticks out at you? Oh my God. Yes, Mr. Bridges. That was a joint effort. Uh uh, no, uh uh, flag. <laughs> Mr. Bridges. Yeah. You back there in the shadows. What sticks out when we, when we read that? Okay, so that was your answer. Lakisa, what's your answer? <laughs> Boy, y'all take y'all got your okay. Okay. Lady C, what sticks out at you? Lady C. Angie, what sticks out at you? I 
Yeah. I mean, for me, my will to Yeah. The most powerful thing that impacts me when I read this is God has better plans and He invites me. So that means He already got it worked out, but He's inviting me to join in. And it's only through and by God's faith. Now this is what we're going to start. In conclusion, the God-centered life is the life that understands that God is inviting me to join in his work. Can I tell y'all something? Westernized gospel says this. I work and invite God in. United States, America, democratic society. We do it and then invite God in. I build a church, then invite him in. You, you, even, you, even when we open up church, let's invite God in. What? He invites me in. Oh, even in, oh goodness, I got four minutes. Even in prayer, if we approach prayer with, he inviting me into his presence, not me coming into his. Now I know, I know, I know it's God's house. We walk in here. He inviting us in. We don't invite him in. All right, all right. So next week, next week, it's only going to get tougher. It's only going to get tougher because I'm going to work out these kinks and we're going to be able to do some things and folk going to need to talk. <laughs> next week, next on Sunday, I'm going to open up talking about God's work, reality number one. Then Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, y'all are going to do the activities for day one, day two, Day three, day four, Thursday, we're going to come back together. Now, it, this, is, this only works if you work it. That's an act of faith. And then on Thursday, when I come back, if there's questions, by then, the Holy Spirit ought to be impacting some of y'all. Ought to be saying something. Because what's going to happen is, the seven realities of his four experiencing God, you know what we need. We need a fresh experience with God. And we're going to look at Moses' life, the example. The first reality is God is always at work around you. And on Sunday, I'm going to teach that. I may preach it, but most likely I'm going to teach it. I'm going to show you what God is saying with that and let us do the activities on a daily basis. This small group is designed for in-person worship. So we got to get creative with Zoom and live and going doing this. So in order to get the best out of it, you got to participate. Y'all got it? Because uh, as you participate, y'all know, y'all get asked me questions this Thursday. It cuts on a gift. Bam! All right? And guess who Guess who walking with, through this also? Me. I'm answering the questions also, because I'm examining. I'm examining. We're taking a we're taking a very personal or in we we're taking a very personal in your face approach. And watch what happens at the end of this. All right. Any questions? If you can unmute yourself, you can, or you can raise your hand and I'll unmute you. Any questions? All right, let's pray. Let's pray. God, we thank you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We exalt your name. God, we thank you for what you're about to do and what you're already done. God, you are inviting us in to experience you in a deep, personal, intimate, 
in your face way. God, we know that this way that we're doing is not easy for some of us. And some of us are not used to talking in, in public places. But in order to get the most out of you, this lesson, God, we just pray that, God, that we'll be transparent. Because we know that you're inviting us to experience a new reality with you. You're inviting us to understand and to know, God, your will for our lives. We appreciate you. We ask, oh God, that doing this between now and the next time we meet, God, that your Holy Spirit begins to stir on the hearts of everyone on this live and everyone that shall participate. God, we pray, oh God, that somehow you will open up the eyes of our understanding that we may know what is the hope of your calling, what the riches of your glory, of your inheritance in the saints is, and what is the exceeding greatness of your power to us, for, which you believe, which you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead. Go with us, cover us, and keep your angels around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. We will see y'all Sunday. Love y'all Saturday. And we'll see the rest of y'all Sunday.